Hi, I'm Lindsay Lamb, and you can see me in Blue Line, Emma's Chance, and Apple of My Eye. And you're listening to my interview with Elaine Goodman on gogoodman.com.au. I read you grew up all around theatre, so going to theatre and performing in theatre all up the east coast of America. When did you first consider acting as a career path? Um, well, my first professional job in theater was when I was 10. Um, but I don't know if a 10 year old's can, I don't, I don't think a 10 year old's brain is wired like, this is my career path. But, um, I knew that it was something that I loved. So I guess maybe like 15 is when I kind of decided that this is really what I wanted to be doing, you know, long term. Um, but yeah, it all started when I was 10. So would you consider yourself like a, a child star or a child prodigy? Or were you? <laughs> was there any kind of pressure on you? Like, for example, there may have been on Macaulay Culkin to get into that industry, or were you doing it happily? I was doing it happily. My None of my family is in the industry, is in the entertainment industry. Um, so nobody was really pushing me to do anything or be anything at a certain age or, you know, level. Um, so they just, you know, they were happy as long as I was happy. So, yeah, there was definitely no pressure on me. Um, I just kept, you know, I loved it and I kept wanting to do it. And I was lucky enough to have parents that supported me in doing so. Was there a stage where they said you have to have a backup plan? <laughs> um, I think that they've always kind of been, well, I ha I mean, I, I had to get my college degree. That was a rule. Um, but then I think that they, I've been, I, you know, since, since I was 10, I've been doing this. So I, I think that they kind of realized early on that even if they said that I needed a backup plan, I probably wouldn't have listened. <laughs> There's no backup plan. <laughs> There's no backup plan. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> was there a stage through school or college where you went from playing supporting roles to playing lead roles consistently? Um, you know, I I still kind of I go back and forth. Um, and I think that that's really cool. I mean, I don't think that I'm at the level yet. Um, I hope to one day be, but you know, I'm not at the level where I should be playing lead roles all the time. I mean, I think that one of the best things is having like, you know, a smaller role and opposite somebody who you, you know, who has been training and doing this much longer than you have and you have been so that you can learn from them and, um, you know, really benefit from them. And so, yeah, I, I mean, I go back and forth with, you know, a lead or strong supporter or even, you know, very, like very small supporting. Um, if it's the right project, I definitely don't, I don't turn down a role just because it's not a lead. <laughs> so that transition to a consistently, do you think it's more of a con? Uh, do you think it's more of a confidence thing, more of an ability thing, or more of a uh, how marketable you are to the producers kind of thing? Um, you know, I think all around. You know, if there's if if there's a film and the two lead characters are in their forties, you know, or older, or if they're, if the two lead characters are, you know, 10 years old, you know, it doesn't matter how marketable or really, or really talented or anything. I'm, there's no way that I'm playing a 10 year old or a 40 year old. So, <laughs> you know, it just really depends on the script and you know what they're kind of looking for. So you don't want to, you don't want them to make you look 40 quite yet. <laughs> Um, I think I'll wait a few years for that. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a long interview. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of actors make the big move from the East Coast to Los Angeles on the West Coast, and you made the move about six or seven years ago. What was your motivation? Was it to have a screen career or general career progression or lack of opportunity on the East Coast? What was that motivation? Um, yeah, I moved... Um, Jovi, sorry, that's my dog. Um, I moved um, four, five years ago now, um, and I moved for um, school. So I got into the acting program at the University of Southern California, and I knew I ultimately wanted to live in Cal uh, live in Los Angeles eventually. Um, but getting into that program was kind of the fire that I needed um, to get out here sooner, I guess. 
from from my reading, it was around 2013 20 to 2014 when you started getting a few roles on screen in L.A. in shorts, independent movies, and a few bigger productions. Can you tell me about the time between arriving in L.A., starting studying, and and then getting those roles? Um, did you get a part-time job as well? Did you do the kind of waitress kind of usual thing, or did you do something else? Um, so yeah, when I, when I, well, when I moved out to LA to go to school, I was definitely had in my mind, you know, oh, you know, I'll, I'll go to school. I'll also be auditioning all the time. I'll be doing films. And then when I started school, I was like, oh, wow, like I, this is a lot of school, you know, like, (laughs) uh, I kind of had to take a step back and have some humble pie about how much I could actually probably accomplish during the time that I was in school. Um, but I was able to still do a few projects here and there. Um, and then I, um, nannied, um, I love kids and I mean, I've done so many different jobs. I've, um, what have you done? done? Oh gosh. Okay. So I have been like a professional shopper where I grocery shop for people and I love grocery shopping. So that's actually like, (laughs) oh, ton of fun for me. I love food. Um, and I love buying things. So that was, that's kind of perfect. <laughs> um, I, that, um, nanny, a dog walker. Um, I, there's a bowling alley out here called Lucky Strike. And, um, I, for a little bit, I would, um, stand, um, with a man who was dressed up as a bowling pin and like, kind of just like wave to people outside um, oh, I, I feel like I've just done all like these just random weird jobs, but you know, you have to, if you want to stay out here, um, it's, ex- it's not cheap <laughs> and yeah, you just kind of have to do what you have to do until you, you know, get where you want to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've met so many cool, interesting people doing all that stuff, so I don't have any regrets. <laughs> When you're a, profes- a professional shopper, are you given a budget to stay under? <laughs> <laughs> yes, unfortunately. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you're given, like, a list so they know, like, what everything's going to cost. I can't, like, you know, oh, I think that you would love this, like, $80 cheese. <laughs> I, <can't do> <laughs> I don't think that exists, but, you know. In your short career so far, you've already covered a variety of genres from comedy to drama to adventure to thriller and horror. Do you have a favorite when it comes to genre or kind of character? Well, my favorite genre to watch is um, psychological thrillers. Um, I love I, I love any sort of film or documentary or TV show where you're having to you know, really follow along and like figure out things as you go and twists and turns. And, um, so that's my favorite genre in general. Um, but, and I, I don't, I haven't, well, I've done two that I guess I would consider psychological thrillers, but, um, I've had a lot of fun recently doing films that, um, I've been able to do stunts in. And I'm, that's something that I'm really focusing on right now is training to, be able to, you know, at least, you know, just get to get better and better. Um, cause I'm definitely nowhere near a professional stunt woman, but that's, um, something that I've really enjoyed doing and being able to act and then also do my own stunts has been a lot of fun. So I guess that would be like action, you know, that kind of live action, uh, genre. You've got two films or two big, two kind of, kind of big films coming out this year that I want to touch on both of them. First of all, Blue Line is one of your new films, and it sounds quite rough. It sounds like uh, a bit of a thriller, even a psychological thriller, like you prefer, but your character's name is Bunny. <laughs> can, you, mm-hmm. can you tell me a bit a bit more about it? Yeah, um, so Blue Line is the story of two, um, of a woman who's in a... Um, pretty horrific marriage and her and her friend go on a sort of a crime spree in order to um, rob her husband and escape the marriage and the situation. And um, so I play Bunny and she is uh, the cheerleading captain at the local high school um, that 
happens to be by the bank that they rob. So um, they hold me hostage um, when they're leaving because they know that the cops won't shoot um, or kind of like, you know, bombard them if they're holding this 18 year old um, with a gun. So, yeah, it's um, it was a lot of fun. It's actually Blue Line was one of the first projects that I booked um, after graduating from college. And um, it's going to be one of the last ones that have come out out of out of everything that I've done since then. So it's going to be interesting to kind of see it. I think that it might be a little a little trippy in a sense. Um, so it was, you know, two two years ago at this point. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's coming out in March, and uh, yeah, we're really excited to see it. It was it was a good time. So you haven't seen the final cut of it yet. No, I've seen some of my clips, but I haven't seen the final cut. I read that it's, correct me if I'm wrong, that it's a worldwide release on March 17. Is that a new experience for you? Is it going to be out here in Australia? Yeah, it's going to be everywhere. Lionsgate is distributing it. Um, I believe it has a small theatrical release, but then it's going to be um, well on demand everywhere in iTunes and then I believe Redbox and Target and Walmart and all of those outlets. Um, it's cool when one company does the the worldwide release because then you know that everybody's going to be able to see it. Um, sometimes they do it by like different territories and stuff. I don't, I mean, I'm not even going to pretend like I know how that whole world works um, <laughs> with the distribution deals, but, um, but yeah, I'm excited that I'll have, you know, get to have everybody be able to check it out. Is there going to be a promotional tour? I, that would be cool, but I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> yeah. So would you, like, is it a v- violent film from from what you can remember? Is it, <laughs> is, it, is it like, is it a violent film or is it, what, what kind of film is, is it for anybody? Um, I think probably uh, it's rated R. Rated um, R. I think yeah. R in America means something different to, what does R in America mean? R is like you have to be 17 to see okay. it in theaters. R means 18 here. Oh, 18? Yeah, and see 17. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it may, yeah, it means the same thing. Okay. Um, there's, I think there's a, there's a little nudity in it. Not me, but a um, little nudity in it, and uh, so I think that that's what makes it R. But other than that, yeah, I mean, there's lots of it's lots of you know shooting and um, that sort of thing. So. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty intense film. Very different than a lot of the other ones that I've worked on recently that have been very kid friendly and um, involving you know baby animals and stuff. So this one was very different. <laughs> is it intense to film, or is it is it like kind of is is it fun to film because you obviously know that it's a film and you can relax between scenes? Do you have to build a certain intensity when you're filming scenes? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, you know, my character, she's she got to kind of be the there definitely I mean, once she gets kidnapped, you know, then the stakes definitely get raised, but um, you know, before that she gets to just be the typical kind of you know, Lucy Goosey, whatever cheerleader. Um, but yeah, it's it it was intense to film and I think that what added to the intensity was that we were filming in the middle of a snowstorm and so that adds a level of danger in a sense I mean everything all the stunts that we did were very obviously regulated and safe but um definitely adds a whole different layer um than if we were filming in southern California where it's just gorgeous all the time you know one of your other movies, which is being released this year, is called Apple of My Eye, and that's with Amy Smart and Burt Reynolds, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Um, and it has you playing a Braille tutor. Can you talk about the process from doing your research to making a role and movie like this realistic and be- believable, especially to the people who are blind or vision impaired and the people that know them? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's something that I was incredibly serious about, um, obviously. But, uh, you know, the last thing that I ever want to do is to do something incorrectly um, when it is uh, 
something that, you know, I, I should be doing right when I'm portraying it on film. Um, and so I, you know, I read a lot of books. I watched a lot of YouTube videos, um, on my own in, in California, but then we flew to Florida to film and, um, we filmed a lot of the scenes at this place called Southeastern Guide Dogs, which is this incredible, amazing place. Um, that, you know, train, they get the, the little puppies and they train them to be seeing eye dogs, um, for visually impaired people. And, um, worked, I worked a lot with the women there who work there and they were able to provide me with so much information and, um, you know, books and tools and games and keyboards and, um, you know, showing me how to, just like the, the mannerisms and how to place somebody's hand on certain objects. Um, so it was so, I mean, that was, that information was just invaluable to me because it's one thing to be able to read, but you can't ask a book all the questions that you have. And luckily for me, I like, I mean, I have a lot of questions and lucky for me that they were, you know, so generous with helping. Um, so yeah, that's really what, what was the, the, it was, I mean, it was like a best case scenario type of thing that I was able to meet with all of them. Is watching YouTube videos like a newer kind of way of researching things? Um, I, yes and no. I think that YouTube, well, for me, YouTube videos are really great. Um, but I think that you always have to fact check. You know what I mean? Like I watch YouTube channels if I'm like trying to like, if I'm trying a new recipe or if, you know, just or like little workout videos or stuff like that. But something like, um, like when I was watching YouTube videos, um, and watching people learn Braille, um, you know, I had to, I watched them obviously, but then I had to go back and like, you know, make sure that everything that they were doing was accurate. Cause there's like, there's not, there's nothing on YouTube that's like, this is real or like, this is an opinion or like, you know, this is like half real, half an opinion. So, um, yeah, I don't know for research. I think that research that should, I, I try to do most of that with like hardcore, like textbooks that, you know, it's been proven that that is, those are the facts. Um, but yeah, YouTube, I think that, I mean, I use it mostly for like, yeah, mostly for cooking and like trying to like figure out like, I don't know weird things like how to put together like furniture or like a, <laughs> install something on tv i don't know Does, doesn't ikea provide instructions yeah but there's no <laughs> words <laughs> all right okay i can't follow those little pictures did you have to learn a little bit of braille in order to portray the character you know i tried my hardest <laughs> braille is extremely complicated in my opinion it's you know in but from from the time that I found out that I booked the role to the time that we went down there to film was only a matter of a I mean a couple of weeks um so no I did not learn braille um I think that you know it would be I think I think that it's probably more difficult I think that's definitely more difficult than learning a foreign language um I, you know, was able to start like recognizing certain letters. Um, but in order to, there, yeah, I did not, I did not learn Braille. Unfortunately, that would have been very cool, but no. <laughs> what, what about the girls that played? Because Amy Smart's the mother and her daughter is the one that loses her sight. What about mm -hmm. the, the, the young, the young girl? Did she have any, did she have the same kind of training as you? Yeah, she, um, we worked a lot with her and actually she, it was cool because she came out to Los Angeles and met with, um, myself and the director and, um, we went to, we, we, uh, had these blackout glasses for her and, um, you know, the, a walking cane and, um, we took her around all different places of Los Angeles, um, and, it was, re I, I mean, it was so interesting to watch, but I just, can't, I can't even imagine as her, like, you know, how she, how it made her, you know, feel and like b being able to, you know, just having one sense completely eliminated and having, you know, just, you know, where's the fork and like where, you know, and how things, and she was saying that, you know, after, and we did this with her for days and days. Um, so it was, you know, she, we did, a, you know, she had a lot of that sort of training and I think that what was, 
one of the most important things to everybody involved was, you know, being as, you know, respectful and aware and just, you know, of, of the visually impaired community and making sure that we did them justice and we, you know, we were doing everything the best that we could. Is that going to be released around the, is Apple of My Eye going to be released around the world as, as well? Because I'd, I'd be quite interested in seeing that because I'm, I'm vision impaired myself and I have a lot of friends with oh. all different levels of vision impairments and it's just something I'd, I'd be interested in seeing how, how I guess, Hollywood can, can portray it because there aren't a lot of movies that involve blind or vision impaired characters. Yeah, um, Sony, it was released, um, in mid January, um, but Sony released it, so it was worldwide. Um, so yeah, uh, it should be, I mean, it, yeah, it should be in, do you guys have like Target and Walmart and stuff down in we Australia? Have, we have Target. Yeah, we it, don't, don't have Walmart. It's, it'll, it should be at, it should be at Target, um, but also like on iTunes, oh, um, iTunes, you can rent idea. it. That's a good idea. Yeah, you can actually. rent it on iTunes. I'm mm-hmm. doing that. Um, yeah, I had a two year old iTunes voucher that was about to go out of date, so I used it to rent a couple of <laughs> couple of movies that I've wanted to see for a little while. So that was yeah. a little while ago. Yeah, it's cheap mm-hmm. to rent movies on iTunes. It, it brings back mm-hmm. like, like such nostalgia renting movies as a kid. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> <laughs> Another string you have to your bow, bo- as you've mentioned, you've started learning how to do stunt work. Do you? Are you? Do you just do your own stunts, or do you have the aim of being able to stunt double for other actresses as well? Um, yeah, I well, so I um, I was a ballerina growing up, and I was always um, dancing, and so that's really what got me into stunts. Um, as of now, I've just well, no, that's not true. Um, I've done I have done stunt double work, um, but m- for the most part, I just have been doing my own stunts. Um, if I was able to get at the level to be a professional stunt woman, um, which would be phenomenal, but obviously tons and tons and tons of training. Those women are just incredible athletes and, you know, everything that they, they, you know, there's, there's just so much work that goes into it. Um, but yeah, that would be definitely something that I would be open to if I ever got to that point. But right now I'm just focused on making sure that, you know, when there is a role that comes up that, you know, is is primarily an acting role, but that also says, you know, we would like for the actress to be able to do X, Y, and Z, that I can do that. So what have, what have you had to do so far? What kind of stunts? Um, I've done a few wiring stunts. So, like, you know, they'll attach, um, like, a, a kind of like a vest under your clothing, and then, you know, you'll get um, either flown backwards very fast or, like, you know, to the ceiling. Um, I've done wiring work like into crash pads on the ceiling um and then just i've a lot of you know just fight choreography um so different like fight sequences um can do like you know tumbling and gymnastic work and just stuff like that have you had any injuries yet knock on wood nothing more than a few bruises here and there but (laughs) everything heals (laughs) and i also read in an interview where you talked about making some comedy content for YouTube as well. Can you tell me a bit more about your ideas? I've seen a couple of your, your lip sync videos already where you've lip synced Kesha, which is, which is pretty, oh, cool, yes. pretty energetic. <laughs> so do you have, do you have a comedy side? Yeah. So, uh, my friend Sterling and I, um, we've been creating content for, um, Instagram and, um, I do want to get into YouTube and so we've been writing for YouTube. Um, but as of we're, I mean, we're at stance right now. I think that everybody is, um, I guess I shouldn't speak for everybody, but I feel like there is a solid amount of people who's, you know, they're, they're just the attention span is really only like a minute long. And so that's why Instagram, Instagram is, you know, so great that, you know, you're just kind of scrolling through your phone. If something's funny, you watch it for a second. And you know, if not, you just keep scrolling and, um, so we've been, that's what we, we've been catering to that one minute kind of comedy, um, outline. So we've been doing a lot. Um, I have a bunch of them up on my Instagram and then, you know, we were just doing them to, for fun to begin with. And then, uh, one of them got reposted, um, and then reposted again. It has, you know, over like 2 million views, um, just a silly little video that we did. So we've been kind of getting on that track and, um, 
you know, ultimately it's just fun to keep your brain creative and working. Um, but you know, people and you know, to make people laugh, like that's a really, that's a cool feeling. Have you had training to be a writer or is it just what comes to your head naturally? Um, I don't want to take anything away from the people who actually, you know, <laughs> have training and a lot of work into being writers. Um, I took a ton of writing classes in college. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of what comes into my head. We'll, you know, we'll have like a little writing session and get all of our ideas down and then tweak them and fine tune them. And then when it comes to the day, we kind of throw all of it away and stick to what we outlined and just kind of see what happens. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So you've, you've worked with Burt Reynolds and Amy Smart, as we've mentioned. You've also worked with Will Wheaton, William Shatner and Joey Lawrence. Are you someone that gets starstruck or do you have some good stories or memories from working with some of these more well-known actors i i honestly have great memories with working with all of them um it's funny the, i wouldn't say a star i mean yeah 100 percent. like if i saw like i don't like i love elizabeth banks if i saw her like walking into the coffee shop or something i'd be like oh, it's elizabeth banks um but uh, everybody that you, you know, when, when we're working on a film, it's such an intimate setting and everybody gets to know each other so well that after, you know, day two, it's just like, oh yeah, like that's Joey or, you know, that's whoever, like it just, they become, it's, you know, they just become more real because you're in like a real setting. It's not like, you know, seeing somebody on TV all the time and then seeing them at a coffee shop is like very surreal, I guess. Um, but yeah, it was, it's, uh, the only, the only person that I, <laughs> So I grew up watching Lizzie McGuire and um, I did a film uh, called Hide in the Light and we were at the table read or the the day after the table read and um, I kept like looking at this guy in the cast and I was like, how do I know him? I must have a friend of a friend who we've like met before, you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden it clicked in my head and I was like, oh my God that's Ethan Kraft. And I had the big, and his name was, his name in real life is Clayton Snyder, but um, he was just like the nicest human being ever. But I was like, oh my God, I had like the biggest crush on him when I was like 13. And then, you know, <laughs> and now I'm like, oh my God. Like, you know, that I was, I thought that was really cool. I like just geeked out, you know, for a while, for quite a while, probably like the whole film. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so that was cool. But um, most of the time it's just, you know, it, of course, like it's a, an admiration level, um, and a respect level, but then it's just, you know, you just, they're, they're everybody's, you know, a human. Uh, so, uh, Will, Will Wheaton and William Shatner are obviously pop culture icons as well. Were you a bit of a pop culture buff or? Um, I like to try to, you know, I mean, I, I definitely, I stay up on, uh, on the pop culture, but I wouldn't call myself a pop culture buff, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I do. I mean, I, 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 you like to, you know, stay in touch with what's going on. I think that that's really important. I'm a bit of a pop culture nineties nerd. Are you going to see Elizabeth Banks's new movie? Which one? <laughs> Power Rangers. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I love Power Rangers. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, well I I worked I did a bunch of um when I first moved out here I did a bunch of um like super heroine um like uh shows and stuff like that. So I've been to like all the Comic Cons and WonderCon and all of that kind of thing. So I love I love that whole scene. Yeah, so I've got a, a a couple of um weird wacky questions. I don't usually do weird wacky questions, but I thought I'd throw it in for a bit of a bit of variety. So I'm gonna try them. If they don't work, let me know. <laughs> okay. The first two people that popped up when I followed you on Instagram were Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester <laughs> Stallone. Any idea why? Really? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I have no idea why. <laughs> I don't have the slightest clue. I have I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. No, nothing. Nothing comes to mind. All right. We'll. Skip I mean, that. Arnold and I both live in California. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I don't know. I really have no idea why that would come up. Live? Maybe California? But that's just such a strange pairing. I have no idea why that would come up. Like both of them. These two buddy, two of the most well-known action stars of all time. Yeah. 
I mean, that's cool. I'm not mad about it, but yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> okay. It's fine. I'll decide in editing whether to put that in or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I usually leave this question till last, but we'll do it now because there's a couple more questions I want to ask. Where can people find you? Um, my Instagram is laml91. Uh, my Twitter handler, handle is um, Lindsay Lamb underscore, and then my Facebook is Lindsay Lamb Actress. I wanna, I wanna ask, is Lindsay Lamb your real name or is it a stage name? It's my real name. Wow. So, have you had nicknames as a kid? What have some of your nicknames been? Most people just call me Lamb, uh, and I mean, as a kid, but also now, like, most people, or, I mean, I, a lot of people just call me Lamb. Um, when I, I mean, growing up, I think that for the first, like, four years of my life, I thought my name was Bub, because that's, <laughs> my dad would just always call me Bub. Um, so that was an identity, identity crisis that I had to face. Um, but yeah, but Lindsay Lamb is my real name. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's funny, the amount of people that have asked me that question, and then I tell them, yes, that's my real name, and they still don't believe me, and they have to see my ID. <laughs> Do you, are you a fan of it? Do you like it? I mean, it, it's catchy. Yeah. Do you like yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I haven't, I haven't ever, you know, thought about changing it, so. <laughs> <laughs> and the final quest, uh, the final question is, and I just thought of this this morning, because I was just thinking about it just beforehand. How important is, I mean, you have a lot of things in your life. You've got acting, you've got stunt work, you've got, I mean, you've started making videos for Instagram, you do all your social media, you, as hobbies, you do yoga, you do, what have I written here, hiking, paddle boarding, and you've got two rescue dogs, Scotch and Jovi. How important is variety for you in your lifestyle, and especially in Hollywood? Um, yeah, I think it's really important. I, I, I think that it's important for me to, um, keep busy. I, um, I mean, there's that expression, uh, an idle mind is the devil's playground. And my, even when I am like a little bored, like I go insane. I have to be doing something all the time. And, um, I think that in this, in the entertainment industry, when, you know, I, of like last year I was working nonstop and there's no prediction. I mean, I, it's hard to say, you know, how much I'm going to be working for the rest of this year. Um, I would like to be working a ton, but if, you know, if I, if I'm not there, I have to have other things going on. Um, I can, you know, I'm, I can't just be sitting and waiting by the phone. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really important for me and just like for, I think my mental health, you know, to have, a lot of things going on and living in Los Angeles makes that easy, um, which is, you know, I'm very lucky. Um, but yeah, I, I think that it's also important to have a lot of, you know, activities and things that you like doing that are outside of your career. You know, you I think that that's probably important in any career um, to have things besides, you know, work, work, work. And so I have my two dogs who are laying on the couch and, um, I, I mean, I am obsessed with them, like an unhealthy amount. And, um, so I, I do a lot with them. We are always outside and I love cooking and I love spending time with my friends. And, um, yeah, so I think that, it, I think that variety is good. Keep things, keep things fresh. Do you have an option of picking up the professional shopper job if you haven't got any acting work at any given moment? <laughs> um, I don't know about that, but, um, <laughs> I do have friends who all, you know, they'll be like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, you know, I'm at Trader, Trader Joe's is our, is one of our grocery stores out here. My friend Alana the other day texted me, what are you doing? And I said, I'm grocery shopping. I'm at Trader Joe's. And she's like, great. So if you could pick me up, um, some quinoa and two bottles of red wine. And I was like, yeah. And then I was like, wait, <laughs> so I still am. A shopper is basically the moral of the story is that that will never die because everybody knows my love for grocery stores. <laughs> Trader Joe's. It sounds like such a sus place. <laughs> it's uh, Trader Joe's. Yeah. And then we have, what else? We have Trader Joe's and we, our main grocery store is called Ralph's. <laughs> are they big franchises or are they just independent ones? Yeah, no, they're big franchises. 
Right, okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> I don't know where to go from that, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just hit you with a fun fact at the end of the interview. <laughs> I'm happy with that. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, Lindsay, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to watch, I'm going to get Apple of My Eye off iTunes and I'll tweet you what I think about it. But thank you very yeah, much for spending too. so much time with me today. Of course. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Good luck with your chores. <laughs> <laughs>